Hi. Women have been asking me recently about their younger daughters, like 18 to 21, who don't go to college and what they should do with their lives because all they want to do is be mothers and um, wives, wives and mothers and keepers at home. And they don't want to go to college. So they're asking me what they should do with their lives in the meantime until they get married because our culture pushes young women everyone to go to college because that's the be all and end all. In fact, our culture idolizes college in my opinion. And what I tell them to do is to, um, if, they, if their goal is to be a wife and mother, um, just always keep that as a goal in their life um, and wait upon the Lord um, because we don't, you don't know God's timing and um, you don't know his will for your life specifically. But God's will for the majority of women is to be married, to bear children, and to guide the home. So what they can do in the meantime is to make sure they know how to run a home because no matter where they live, whether they're living with their parents, um, in a dorm room, if they have their own apartment, they have to run a home. So they need to learn how to keep a clean and tidy home. They need to learn the skills of that and just practice and don't live in a pigsty, but live in a home, an apartment, a home, help your parents or wherever you live. That's a beautiful home. It doesn't take long to keep your home clean and tidy. Um, I, if, if, you, if you actually time yourself about how long it takes to clean your kitchen after a meal, you'll be surprised at how short of time it takes to clean the kitchen, clean a bathroom, especially with my Norwex products that I use that I love. So um, it doesn't take a long time to have a clean and tidy home at all. And then and you can see my Norwex hanging up over my oven over there. Usually I get that out of the way, but that's where I hang it to dry. <laughs> So I use it all the time, so it's just right there for me to use to wipe down my counters and my cupboards and my refrigerator. So anyway, um, I, I can see it in the back. <laughs> so anyway, after that, after learning how to keep a clean and tidy home, they need to learn how to um, fix nourishing food, research how to be healthy, how to eat healthy, um, natural cures for your children. I use Dr. Mendelssohn's book. How to keep your children healthy in spite of your doctor. He was a pediatrician for over 30 years and whenever my kids had anything I went to his book and he let me know if something was an emergency or not and oftentimes he would just say um, get them off sugar you know and, and his whole thing is the, the immune system is a powerful gift that the Lord's given us. Fevers fight infection. You don't want to bring down fevers unless they're extremely high because the fever is fighting the disease that's in your body and it's fevers are good. And so what you want to do is to study all that, study um, all the um, good recipes, how to make good foods to feed your future family or to feed people that come into your home wherever you live. Your home should always be a home of hospitality and ministry to anyone who enters it. So um, have people stay with you um, and learn how to wait, um, take care of them and serve them and have a servant's at it heart because if you're going to have a family and um, a husband, the best thing you can do is to learn to um, get rid of the selfishness in your, in your mind and have a servant attitude instead that just loves to care for people, to um, meet their needs, make them as comfortable and as content as they can be. So um, invite people into your home, whether you're single or married, and we're all to, supposed to have a hospitable attitude. And with a clean, if you keep your home clean and tidy consistently, you'll be much more apt to invite people into your home because you won't be embarrassed of a messy home. I'm, I'm actually never embarrassed when people come into my home because my home is um, pretty much clean and tidy. So, um, you know, have people in your home, keep a clean and tidy home no matter what age you are even before you're married, even in your dorm room, you're in a dorm, keep it clean and tidy. And about going to college, if a young woman wants to go to college to become a teacher, a nurse, or something like that, she needs to count the cost. She needs to know um, that she doesn't want to get a lot of debt that will um, keep her from, I know young women who get an education, then they get married and have a baby, and then they have to work for years to pay off that debt. Teach other children, leave their children with other someone else, so they teach so they can pay off their debt. To me, that's insanity. <laughs> you you want to have be able to, whenever you meet the man that you're going to marry, to be able to 
you might get pregnant on your honeymoon, which would be a wonderful thing. My son and his wife got pregnant on their honeymoon and we just treasure that little girl <laughs> and the others that have come right along. So um, babies are a wonderful thing. Our society has made, made them um, not a good thing, but they're a blessing and a gift from the Lord and they're the gift that keeps on giving. So um, be prepared to be able to quit whatever you get into. Don't dig a hole. Don't get into a lot of debt. Don't get a career that you can't, you don't want to leave. Um, if you can go to college without debt, that's awesome. Um, Christian colleges are the way to go because you are learning about the Lord. They are very expensive. So unless you have a career that you can really pay it back for like sons, who are going to be doctors or anything, that's, it's there. They have to go to college to get all that. But for women who really just want to be wives and mothers um, or spend their lives ministering to others, um, it's, it's, you know, and you can, a, a woman who can get a teaching credential without a lot of debt and loves to teach, you know, that's a great ministry for her until she has children or gets married. She might want to quit once she has children. Even nursing, you can have a lot of skills um, for, you know, raising your own children. But if you want to be, um, be able to be home with your children full time, be able to quit. My sister's a nurse and she quit full time while she was raising her babies to raise her children. So, um, cause your own children are much more important than other teaching other children or caring for other children in the hospital. We're to be the ones loving and caring for our children. So you'll be loving your children as you think long term about what you want to do with your life in the short term, um, young women. And then you need to learn modesty, start dressing modestly from a young age, learn to be good by learning who you are in Christ, listening, listen, start learning and listening to great preachers like um, John MacArthur, Michael Pearl, John Piper, um, read sermons by Charles Spurgeon. Um, there's a lot of good preachers out there. Just make sure they're solid Bible. Read, read the Bible every day. Don't worry about finding the new and greatest Bible study. Just get your Bible open, put it on your lap every morning and read. And that's how you become good. So anyway, this is my advice to young women who don't really want to go to college but they do want to be wise and mothers. And then just wait patiently on the Lord. Make sure when you find that man, if you have godly parents, that they like that man, that they can see that he loves the Lord and is a hard worker. Those are the two things I gave my daughters. Make sure, hard worker, love the Lord. And um, so, and make sure friends, the godly friends approve of him because it's a, it's, being married is a lifetime commitment. So make a really good choice. Just um, work on yourself becoming a godly woman at a young age. and. And you'll be prepared to be a godly woman and a godly wife and mother when the time comes. So this is my advice to you, young women. <laughs> and just wait upon the Lord because he's so good. And there are godly men out there. I know there's some women who are raising amazing godly men. So um, get involved in a good Bible-believing church where you'll, you're going to be able to meet some godly men. And make sure that they're involved in church and, and active in it and really love the Lord deeply. So anyway, that's my advice. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye-bye.